Live from the Pepsi Coliseum in Indianapolis, Indiana, the International Hockey League's Indianapolis Ice face the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Calling the action for tonight's game, Jim Barber and Mike Barrick. Jim Barber with you tonight at the Pepsi Coliseum for a very interesting matchup in the IHL between the Indianapolis Ice and Salt Lake City Golden Eagles. The National Anthem playing in the background, so we'll talk a little quieter if we have to, and talk about tonight's two very interesting teams that are playing, because both of them come in with 500 records, but more importantly, they have a great deal of youth. From the Salt Lake City side, perhaps the man who knows it best is Mike Barrick, who called some play-by-play -play here in the market of Indianapolis. First of all, welcome back to town. One year of the Indianapolis Checkers, the last year in the International Hockey League, and of course now with the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Good game here tonight. Andre Trefiloff will be in goal. The Golden Eagles, a very youthful team, a team that is very skilled up front, a team that has some tremendous defense, but I think the key of the team will be the goaltending. Trevor Kidd has played well, but Andre Trefiloff, who played for the Soviet team last year in the Olympics, will be the starter tonight. Indianapolis and Salt Lake City when we come back play by play a period number one from the Coliseum in Indianapolis. Bankers hours? You won't find them at IND. Look, we know you can't stop everything just to get to the bank. So now, many IMB banking centers are open Saturdays. You gotta like that. Saturday banking right here at IMB. And we're making banking easier on weekdays. By keeping the lobbies in many of our centers open until the early evening. And frankly, that's a more convenient way to bank. Saturday banking at INB. We're working for you. Now isn't that convenient? What can you do with a wet basement? Call Jack Grant's Basement Dewatering Systems. We'll install an attractive and affordable dewatering system that delivers proven results guaranteed. We've installed over 1 million feet since 1978. That's over 6,000 satisfied customers. No excavation is necessary and affordable financing is available. Reclaim your wet basement and turn it into usable living space. Call right now. Jack Grant's Basement Dewatering Systems, 255-2425. 255-2425. Fasten your seat belts, game underway with Mike Barrick. I'm Jim Barber from the Pepsi Coliseum. The Indianapolis Ice in their home white visiting red for Salt Lake City Golden Eagles and we're just seconds in in the neutral zone. Controlling the puck is Kriva Krasov, the outstanding rookie from Russia. He is of 18 years of age and he will probably be a very sensational player before it's all said and done. Now Kevin St. Jock who dominated the Western League Dumps it in, picked up by Kevin Guy, who tries to clear it. And now up to neutral ice comes Salt Lake City before it's poked away. Now St. Jock had the puck, trying to make a rush, but it's back in the ice zone. And Andreevsky will drop it in. Truffle off the super goaltender that Mike Barrick told you about in defense tonight for Salt Lake City. The ice will have difficulty against him because he is one great player. Now the ice send it along the far boards. A check almost into Herkus. Now from the left circle, taken away from the Golden Eagles. Here comes Salt Lake City across the line, looking to pass and shoot in on goal. And a stop behind the net. Patrick LeBeau, LeBeau with the great scoring chance. Patrick LeBeau with the hat trick in the Golden Eagles game Wednesday night. LeBeau with 13 points on the season, and LeBeau, of course, is very dangerous. Mark's very concerned about him and really concerned about his hockey team tonight because they have lost two in a row. Now Herkus tries to split the defense, looks for Zach Boyer, but it overleads him in the corner. Centering pass out in front, a backhander and another shot, and Trefiloff, boy, tough already, Mike Barrick. Trefiloff makes a save on the centering pass in front of the goal. This is fourth game as a member of Salt Lake. He's 2-0-1, a 2.91 goals against average. Last year played for the Moscow Dynamo team, Alex Udin, his teammates, and also for the Indianapolis Ice, Alexander Andreevsky, also played on that team. And there you see the record for Andre Trefiloff in his first game here at the Pepsi Coliseum. He is one great goaltender. His goals against average under three and a undefeated record so far early in the season as the Eagles get it up to center ice. Dropa is able to push it away, but Salt Lake keeps the pressure on. And now good stick handling for the moment by Woodcroft. 
Instead, Nikoluk has to go back for Salt Lake City, and the ice starting to pick it up a little bit in the Salt Lake City zone. This is what Marks wanted to do tonight. That dribbles toward LeBlanc, and LeBlanc kicks it up to the neutral zone where it's stolen away. No score in this hockey game, two minutes in. Now the ice a little sloppy in their own zone as Khan finally gets it up, and here's Ivan Thropa. It's two on one. Tries to shoot left wing, but it's taken away. Thropa, not a quick pass to Williams. Now a shot from the point taken by Thropa, and it's broken up. Well, the ice had the numbers there, Mike Barrick, but couldn't do anything with it. Yeah, the Eagles' defense fairly strong. The Eagles want to keep the defense wide tonight because of the big ice surface, and if they feel they can uh, keep the puck along the perimeters and along the boards, it's going to be very strong against the ice speedy forwards. Here's one of those speedy forwards, Sergei Krivikrov's taking a shot. That goes deep into the corner, and a bump taken there, and a penalty coming up. No. Thought for a minute somebody had raised and did not. Now we've got something coming up, and we do have a penalty, a slashing penalty. Let's yeah. talk about the keys of the game before we identify the accuser here. Some of the things that are important from Indianapolis' standpoint to pick up the pace and more enthusiasm from Salt Lake, just what you mentioned moments ago, the defense. Yeah, the Eagles need to keep the puck uh, on the boards on the outside. This ice surface here in Indianapolis, 200 by 85 is the normal width, 215 by 90 here at the Pepsi Coliseum. And for the defense, uh, you have to keep the puck along the boards because if they start getting into the middle of the ice, that's where the play is developed. Slashing penalty on the play at 256, and it will be David Struch for Salt Lake in the penalty box. The ice go on the power play. For the first time tonight, the ice 26% with the man advantage, 7 for 26 this year. And Mike, that's third best in the league as Joe Clary will set the offense and bring up the rush. Now up to his own line, gets over Bancroft. It's dump and chase as he tries to lead St. Jock. Ice try to hold it in. Salt Lake will try to clear, and they're able to get it back to the neutral zone. This is Clary. Good bump there by Cruz, and Salt Lake will pick up the pressure in the ice zone. Ice just finished three points in back of Salt Lake City last year in an effort to try to get in the playoffs. Now Clary tries to lead, and Salt Lake able to clear, and so far the ice power play ineffective. Bruce, uh, Todd Brost from the Canadian team last year, and Paul Cruz up front. The Eagles' penalty killing has been strong in the early going. Sean Hafey now up front for Salt Lake with Rich Turnham as, as the forwards to kill off the penalty. Trefiloff had it behind the net. Kevin Wortman, IHL Rookie of the Year, is in there as well defensively. Back to the point is Bancroft. Now Bancroft shoots it to his left and will set up in the slot, shooting a one-timer, and Trefiloff may have got his stick out in front. Ice able to keep it in, though. 45 seconds left in the first power play of the game. Now Bancroft. Bancroft looks over the fence, walks it in, gives it back in a high slot. Kriva Krasov back to Bancroft. To the right side and Clary. Eagles keeping the puck along the far boards. That's what they want to do. You don't want to see the players in the slot for a scoring chance like that. Graver Krasov shot it, but it was broken up, and the Eagles send it all the way back, and their defense playing well so far. Want to keep the uh, defense in a box situation when you're a man short. Ice having trouble with the box as Zach Boyer comes on. Only 15 seconds left, though, on the man advantage for Indianapolis. No score in the hockey game. They try to feed Boyer from the right wing. It's high up in the air and a glass behind the net. Still in the Salt Lake zone with only three seconds left in the power play. Now Dykehouse returns it to Boyer. The penalty is over. Ice still controlling in the Salt Lake end. So they've been able to kill off the penalty, and it remains nothing-nothing as the puck dribbles back to the left of LeBlanc. Early on, fast pace in this game. Just the one power play opportunity, and for the most part, very close checking. Dykehouse tries to set it up but can't do it. Stolen away by the Golden Eagles. They come back. Williams back on defense. A good fake out in front of LeBlanc. Try to get his mitts in front of it. Another penalty coming up. We'll come back in a moment to identify exactly what happened. You're watching Ice Hockey tonight between the Golden Eagles and Indianapolis Ice. Introducing the birthday game from the Hoosier Lottery with a chance to win $3,000 a week for a whole year and lots of instant cash prizes. Happy birthday to you. With a birthday game, winning $3,000 a week for a year could be a piece of cake. Well, who'd you expect? All the money went into prizes. 
Jim Barber with Mike Barrett back at the Pepsi Coliseum in Indianapolis. A two-minute penalty for cross-checking against Carl Dykhouse of the defense of Indianapolis. Tell us a little bit about the power play efforts of Salt Lake, Mike. 8 for 43 during the regular season, 18.6%. And you have Patrick Laveau, Rich Chertemaz, and Sandy McCarthy with Sean Hafey and Kevin Workman on the points. Hafey has traditionally played up front, but on the point of the power play recently, and played very well on the point of the power play Wednesday night in the victory over Phoenix. Ice won the draw, and Tishi saw the open lane and sent it all the way back, so Salt Lake will now send its offense. Sean Heafy with the puck, he is number 12. Now they send it up to center ice, and Adam Bennett retrieves, and he'll dump it for Indianapolis, and we'll start it all over again, just seconds into the power play. Truffle off nearly got mixed up over there as the ice short-handed try to get something going, but the Golden Eagles come back to center ice, and now they start to put the heat on. Puck loose in the corner. Chernomaz had his stick on it for a while as he carried it in the zone. Bennett almost took it away from him. And Tishi off the board and all the way down. Again, just like the Eagles did in their penalty killing situation, the ice gaining possession of their own zone and immediately clearing it all the way down the ice. Number seven, Alexander Udine had the puck, but he has it taken away by Lauer. Now Lowry in the zone, dumps it in, and so far the ice able to keep the pressure on as Udine regains it. Two veterans to kill it off for the ice in Herkus and Lauer, both with tremendous National Hockey League experience. Herkus with St. Louis and Quebec, of course, and a long time New York Islander Brad Lauer, the penalty killing situation for Indianapolis. Lauer almost stole it right there. Now Gillingham tries to get it up to center ice, bounces off the far boards and into the end. Lauer nearly had a steal in the other end and almost behind the net for a chance for a wraparound. 13-17 left in the opening period. No score, and this is the first power play effort of Salt Lake City. Referee tonight is Greg Kimmerly, his third year as a referee in the International League. Dan Sass and Patrick Berry are the linesmen. Interesting, Patrick Berry, the linesman tonight, is the son of the commissioner of the International Hockey League, Tom Berry. The faceoff uh, will be deep into Salt Lake territory, circle to the left of Andre Trefilov. Efe in the face-off circle for Salt Lake. Sean Williams for Indianapolis. The ice, a man short. Eagles on their first power play. The ice came up empty in their first own. Ice win the draw. There's a blast from Bancroft and goes behind the net. Ice won the draw and despite shorthanded, had a pretty good shot on goal from the right side. Now back come the Golden Eagles into the ice zone with 25 seconds left on a power play. Shooting high over LeBlanc. Harkins with a blast right there that carried over the head of LeBlanc. Now Harkins tries to get his stick behind the net. He is tied up. Tied up by Ivan Thropa. Now they walk in, shoot down LeBlanc. Puck is loose out in front. And Salt Lake unable to jam it in, although they had the pressure. Great shot by Sean Hafey. The original shot. Todd Harkins in for the rebound. And LeBlanc, LeBlanc uh, was able to squeeze the pads together and keep it from going over. It trickled right of that goal crease area. Lots of traffic in front, but the original shot taken by Sean Hafey. Close range, best scoring chance so far for Salt Lake. 12.45 left in the first period. Jim Barber with Mike Barrick. There's your referee, Greg Kimmerly. The linesman tonight, Dan Sass. And as you mentioned, Patrick Barry. Interesting, Greg Kimmerly is a salesman. He's a part-time referee in the International Hockey League. Works in for Dunn and Bradstreet in Toronto. And on the side is a referee. What do you think of that? That's a pretty good company, so he must be doing well in his I'm other sure work. I'm sure he is. Probably making a little bit more money on his real job and, of course, uh, works pretty much the weekends in the International Hockey League. Face off in the near circle, close to LeBlanc. The penalty just about all killed off as defenseman Bennett brings it up. Clark in chase of him. The penalty is over, and Salt Lake will regroup in their own end. So both teams have had the power play chances tonight. Both teams have failed to score. Now back in the ice zone, check applied by Clark. And dug out by Tepper. Now here's Tepper up to center ice to Tishy and Tishy over to Craig Woodcroft. Woodcroft tries to get around his man, Ken, and Bennett sticks it in the corner. Wortman in pursuit, ice looked to wrap it around, can't do it, no centering pass as well. Control, now a pass intended on the left circle for Bennett. He's still controlling the puck behind the net. I still have it. Full and equal strength as Bennett looks to center, but the puck is deflected all the way back to the blue line, and Woodcroft has to keep it in. Workman will check in pursuit of it, but Boyer gets it, and Boyer's pushed from behind. Now here come the Golden Eagles, who flip it up to the neutral zone. Salt Lake City with a line change, the same for Indianapolis. No icing. 11.40 to go in the first period, and no score. Now Clary up to center ice, stolen by the Golden Eagles, and back in the ice in. Only four shots on goal in the first period. It has been a defensive hockey game. 
Now Andreevsky behind his own net. Andreevsky now double teamed in the corner and he almost shot it the wrong way. Eagles had three men in a forecheck, Struch, LeBeau, and Chertemaz, and a very strong forecheck for Salt Lake. Here comes the rookie, Sergei Krivokrasov. Krivokrasov tries to get around his man, but he's ridden off the play. Now Andreevsky drops it out, looking to backhand out in front is Clary. They shoot! And it misses wide. A good chance, but Trefilov was there, and the ice just couldn't connect. Kevin St. Jock, right in the slot, had the best chance for the ice. Now centering pass to St. Jock, shooting! And Trefilov comes away with a fine play. Andre Trefilov, everything is advertised so far. Now here come the Eagles, open in the slot against LeBlanc, shooting! And LeBlanc makes the save on LeBeau. What a play. With Patrick LeBeau, who had the hat trick in the game Wednesday night, in All Alone on Ray LeBlanc. Back with more after this. Hi, Bobby Leonard for National Car Sales. Just give us a shot. <laughs> no, a shot to give you a great deal. Like a 90 Geo Metro for just $133 a month. Or a 94 Tempo for only $74.95. Before you buy a car, truck, or van, give us a shot. They're in your business. They're giving you a great deal. National Car Sales, out by the big old green sign at 7111 West Washington Street. There is no score in this hockey game. Jim Barber with Mike Barrick. We're on TV tonight in Indianapolis, Salt Lake City, and on radio in Salt Lake City. We're all over the place tonight. So far, this has been a wide-open hockey game, but no scoring. Now Herkus. Herkus carries across the line, but decides to retreat. No offsides there, making sure. And Hicklock knocks it back along the far boards. Dropa, rather, Tichy had his stick on it. Boy, a great scoring chance by LeBeau moments ago, but... Ray LeBlanc came up big. A lot of Olympic experience out here, if you will, tonight. Both goaltenders uh, played in the Olympics as the ice carry in offside at the Salt Lake Blue Line. LeBlanc, of course, last year played a total of eight games in the Olympics. He went 5-2-1 and one at 2.20 goals against. And for the Indianapolis team, the goaltender, uh, as mentioned, LeBlanc, Andre Trefiloff, uh, played four games in the Olympics for the uh, U.S. team. And a look at LeBlanc, who was just fabulous last year, for Team USA is uh, five victories on his way free. He wasn't bad for Team Ice last year as they got an eight game win streak when he came back from the Olympic Games, but then he and the team hit the wall and of course our bad fortune was your good fortune. Here's the playback for Darren Stoke. Stoke, number eight in your picture, had the puck for the moment. Now Stoke got loose. Khan tried to get up and he got the body back in the Salt Lake zone. The Ice's game plan tonight to pick up the pace if they can. A long shot right there by Kahn. He was off balance and he almost had an opportunity. Now Williams behind the net for Indianapolis. Woodcroft gives chase. Instead, Cruz picks it up. And Woodcroft bangs into Cruz. Boy, that must be like banging into a, to a bucket of cement because he just went right down. 9.20 to go in the first period. No score from Indianapolis. Now behind the net is Ray LeBlanc. LeBlanc sends it around the wheel up to Woodcroft. The ice have got the numbers of Williams in the middle. This is Sean Williams crossing the line. Williams tries to dump it in, avoiding the offsides, and instead it was called. So we'll have a faceoff coming up. Golden Eagles and the Indianapolis Ice. Uh, Bob Francis uh, last year, 33-40-9. and nine. It's uh, a fourth-place position in the Western Division, eliminated in the opening round of the playoffs against the Kansas City Blades, who ended up winning the Turner Cup last year. Andre Trefloff, uh, Sean Hafey, and Rich Chernemaz uh, have played very well. And Patrick Laveau, the newcomer, had the best scoring chance for Salt Lake early on. Some great rivalries even back in the Central League when the Eagles had their... Gold uniforms trimmed with green, and the Indianapolis Checkers had some tremendous teams that won a couple of championships in the Central League. We'll be back with more. You're watching the IHL from Indianapolis between the Ice and Golden Eagles. The Blackhawks are coming. The Chicago Blackhawks battle the Washington Capitals in election night face-off at Market Square Arena. Tuesday, November 3rd at 7.30. It's your only chance to see NHL hockey in Indianapolis this year. You will not find tickets to a National Hockey League game for a lower price. Come join us as we freeze the floor of Market Square Arena one more time for the NHL election night face-off. 
from the NHL to the IHL here tonight from Indianapolis. No score in this hockey game. Jim Barber and Mike Barrick. Hope you enjoy the action wherever you're watching. Eight minutes and 35 seconds left as the puck triples up to the neutral zone. Coming back, the Eagles feeding out in front against LeBlanc, and they just missed. Alex Nikoluk with the scoring chance alone in the slot. Nikoluk had his stick on it, just to the right of LeBlanc. Now they try to walk it in. The defense is there. This one popped up and out of play and a faceoff coming up. Well, the puck deflects up into the stands here at the Pepsi Coliseum, uh, in the past known as the Fairgrounds Coliseum, and John Marks has done a tremendous job. He has the most experience of any coach in the International League. And, of course, the two Soviet players, Kriba Krasov and Andreevsky, two of the key people to watch. Marks back for his second season, and quite frankly, he wants to win and win early. He's had uh, tremendous experience. He coached four years in Kalamazoo, and this is uh, his second year as a member and head coach of the Indianapolis Ice. That one set all the way down, and it's icing. As Trefloff didn't have to get a stick on it, Kevin Workman did. 8.05 to go in the first period, and there is no score. Again, both teams come in 500, but Salt Lake City playing a little bit better as of late. Indianapolis disappointing last week. Losing to Milwaukee wasn't a surprise, but getting blown out in their home opener was. Eagles won their home opener over the Kalamazoo Wings. In fact, Andre Trefiloff was the winning goaltender that night and two wins earlier this week against the Phoenix Roadrunners. Chernomaz wins the draw for Salt Lake. Salt Lake has the puck right now. Kevin Malrose deep in the corner, tied up. Now Chernomaz tries to dig it out. A one-timer on LeBlanc just to the right, and it goes all the way out to center ice and Lauer. Now Lauer sends it all the way down to Trefiloff, and Trefiloff sends it all the way back the other way. So it's goaltender to goaltender there for the moment. Ivan Dropa. Now up to center ice, here comes Lauer. Lauer from the left wing, shooting the blast. It's loose out in front of Trefiloff, but no chance for a rebound. He wound up and took a 30-footer and had some mustard on it. Now it's kept in by Dropa, or Tichi, Tichi shooting out in front. The rebound is still loose in the slot and picked up by the Golden Eagles. Back comes Salt Lake City. They don't have the numbers, though. Tichi back to defend against Chernomaz, and Chernomaz intended right there for Gillingham. Now Gillingham dribbles it toward LeBlanc. LeBlanc makes the stop and 7-12 to go in the first period. No score here from Indianapolis. Great arena, Jim. Uh, tremendous history. 1939. Very few people realize that this building's been around for a long time. Hall of Famer Glenn Hall is watching the game tonight. He actually played for the now defunct Indianapolis Capitals. They had a team in the old IHL in the American Hockey League and uh, and, uh, of course, the World Hockey Association is the racer. Some tremendous hockey in this city. Face off in the far circle to the right of Ray LeBlanc with 7-12 to go in the first period. Efe in the face-off circle for Salt Lake City. Up against Sean Williams. Now Efe and Williams looking at each other and looking at the linesman who finally drops the puck. Eagles win the draw, shooting in on LeBlanc. LeBlanc makes the stop. Harkins tries to get to it behind the net. He's poked by Dykhouse, who gets it loose to Woodcroft. Now back to center ice in Hefe, and Hefe tries to send it all the way over. But we have it offsides with just a tick under seven minutes to go in the first period. 7-4, the shots on goal early on in the opening period in favor of the Indianapolis Ice. A very tight checking game as, of course, season tickets available here in Indianapolis and also... In Salt Lake City, the Eagles will be home next uh, Friday and Saturday against the Milwaukee Admirals. I know the ice, a heavy home schedule, lots of weekends. Yeah, we don't anticipate anybody, fo any of the folks from the West dialing up that no, number. If they do, I'm sure it. we'll find a place for them. Face-off will be just inside the blue line to the right of Trefiloff. And over the years, there have always been tight-checking games in this building. I remember the Eagles coming in a couple of years ago and lost 1-0 and 2-1 when Jim Waite and Dominic Kozik were the goaltenders here. Eagles traditionally have had problems scoring goals in this building. Osik traded for the Blackhawks organization out in front against Trefiloff, and they fall on the puck, and we'll be back in a moment. But you're watching the IHL from Indianapolis between the Ice and Golden Eagles.
What's the best kept secret in the shipping business? Speedy Incorporated. Since 1972, Speedy has provided critical shipment connections from Chicago to Miami. Speedy also provides interstate trucking services for 4,500 customers, including Indiana's Customs Examination Site. If you're looking to ship anything in or outside Indiana, look to Speedy. Call toll-free 1-800-428-5002. The best kept secret in the shipping business is Speedy Incorporated. Eagles have won most of the faceoffs tonight, but the ice and Kahn dumped to the ice. We got a penalty coming up, and Indianapolis will have its second power play of the night. Kahn was shooting in from the right wing, and he was tripped to the ice, and there'll be a penalty against Salt Lake City as Williams has a few words out in front, and Sasson Barry over there to make sure nothing develops. Total of 13 minutes and 29 seconds on the clock, and it was Paul Cruz who knocked on uh, Kahn in front of the goal and is being escorted to the penalty box. No stranger to the box last year, 267 minutes, second to Darren Banks, who's now playing with the Boston Bruins. And Cruz leads the team in penalty minutes this year, up to 33 now with the two minutes he gets here. Gets it for hooking, so the ice with their second power play of the night. It will go to the left of Andre Trefilov. Seven shots on goal for Indianapolis and five for Salt Lake City. Very tight checking. Both teams have had good scoring chances in the slot. Truffle off a couple of saves earlier in the first period and LeBlanc made a great one on the bow in tight. Bancroft sets the offense for Indianapolis. Here comes Milan Tichy along the near boards. But Salt Lake able to clear it. Well, at least they thought they were able to clear it. They may have sent it into the Salt Lake bench, and it looks like Francis wasn't real happy about that. That actually went off the back of Dan Sass. That doesn't feel too good. Those linesmen aren't uh, no. padded too well. And Bob Francis was motioning at one of the penalty killers to say, hey, look, let's get it all the way down the ice. Faceoff will be back deep into Salt Lake territory to the right of Trefloff. He's used to these big ice surfaces as... Of course, uh, John Marks and Jim Playfair, who's the assistant, look on on this ice power play. He came a father over the past year, the Jimmy Playfair, and for that matter, John Marks within the last season. Marks very focused on this team. We've talked a lot about it so far this year in Indianapolis, Mike, a, a team that last year didn't really have the talent to go anywhere. This year they've got some scores and they expect to do some things. Last year the ice were ranked ninth in both offense and defense and you're not going to work win too many hockey games out of a 10 team league in uh, statistics like that but as you mentioned much more effective it looks like on the offense. Here comes Bancroft up with a puck to the line. Good pass by Reva Krasov who was trying to get it into the slot but right now Salt Lake has it back in their own end. A minute 15 left on the power play. Indianapolis nothing, Salt Lake City nothing. St. Jock tries to dig it out in the corner for the ice. So far the Eagles and Chernomaz able to kill the penalty. Chernomaz can't clear it out of his own end as Bancroft now doubles him up. And yeah, the Eagles come up with it. They're shorthanded but shooting in on LeBlanc and just to the right of LeBlanc. It was David Struch who let the shot go. The Rookie for Salt Lake out of Saskatoon to the Western Hockey League. They play keep away right now with only 45 seconds left to the man advantage. This one set all the way down to LeBlanc who must field it. And he hands it off to the defenseman Bancroft. Now up to Zach Boyer. Boyer tries to cross the line. Gets around one man. Dances around the other. The folks here wanted a penalty. Nothing called. Now they dig it out. And Boyer just to the left of Treble off behind the net. This is Zach Boyer, 44, swings it to the far corner. Bancroft looks to rather... Now they set around in front, they can't get to it though. I still controlling the puck and handling it well. Now Bancroft in the slot, shooting out in front, broken up. This is Herkus, and the penalty is over. Only four and a half minutes to go in the first period as the ice waste another opportunity. Now Herkus and Lauer, who are roommates, do battle. Tony digs it out. One time Bennett and Trefilov up in the air to make the glove save. Andre Trefilov making the stop for Salt Lake City. Trefilov, the backup goaltender for Michael Stalinkoff, who's now the number one goaltender in Milwaukee with the Admiral. Stalinkoff played the majority of the games in the Olympics last year. Trefilov played four games. He played at the World Championships. He played last year for... And the Milwaukee Admirals will also have the televised game next Friday night on KXIV Channel 14 
in Salt Lake. And also, Sean Hafey, Kevin Wortman, and the Golden Eagle mascot will be at the Pro Image Valley Fair Mall from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock. That's Thursday, October 29th. Autographs and souvenirs available. Sean Hafey, Kevin Wortman, Golden Eagle mascot at the Pro Image Valley Fair Mall. So we're getting it in for everybody, Jim, here tonight. <laughs> Did we leave anybody out? I hope not. <laughs> All the players uh, bounding about. Ray LeBlanc, who was uh, simply marvelous last year, you know. He was instrumental in leading the Flint Spirits back in 1987-88 to the Turner Cup Finals. And the Golden Eagles beat Ray LeBlanc. The Eagles won that series in six games. It was the year that Theron Fleury made his uh, mark on the International League. Former Golden Eagle Peter Lappin was the Turner Cup MVP. And the Eagles did a nice job against Rick Dudley and the Flint Spirits. Ray LeBlanc still in the International Hockey League. One game NHL experience last year against the Sharks. And he beat the Sharks by a score of 5-1. to one. So LeBlanc got the necessary 60 minutes, in, if you will, to be eligible for the expansion draft. And still he winds up here. He's disappointed. But LeBlanc said he won't dip his head. He plans on getting up to the National League somewhere down the line. Had his chance last year. I know it. A lot of players don't even get that one crack at the National League, and I know he was thrilled about his game last year. Shaw, Patrick LeBeau, Rich Chernemaz, Todd Gillingham against the Soviet line for the ice with St. Jacques up the middle. And immediately the ice uh, control the puck. They try and clear it deeper to the Salt Lake zone, and the pass uh, free to Androyevsky, and it's tipped away by Salt Lake all the way to center. A uh, little bit of struggling with this at the early going as the Eagles clear to the ice blue line as Salt Lake control in the neutral zone. one nothing in favor of the ice, and Salt Lake just dump it right back at the goal as Bancroft gives Chernomaz a ride. Eagles in a four check, but the ice break out of there. Up the middle, it's cleared into the neutral zone. Chernomaz and Bancroft collide, and Bancroft comes up with a puck. Here's the plane of the neutral zone just underway here in the second period. Eagles' Alex Judin just scoops it right back into the far corner and to the corner to the right of the Indianapolis goal and controlling the puck is Joe Cleary for the ice. Plays it free for Bancroft off uh, left wing and the ice on the attack into the Salt Lake zone. They try and work it free into the uh, Salt Lake territory and the shot right on by Andreevsky steered aside by Trefilov. The playback of the goal, St. Jacques trying to work it free for the ice behind the Salt Lake net, but beautifully taken away by Paul Cruz. And Cruz on left wing. Bumped hard, good clean hit by uh, Kriva Krasov into the Salt Lake zone and a good uh, couple of checks here in the early going. And McCarthy leads it for Brost on left wing for Cruz. Tipped away at the ice defense. They scramble forward at center. And Zach Boyer on left wing for the former New York Islander. Brad Lauer across the line, but it's offside at the Salt Lake Blue Line. And not only that, an elbow penalty going to be called by the referee, Greg Kimmerly. Greva Krasoff's not very big, and he got pushed around in the Milwaukee series. As you look at Trefeloff behind the net. And Greva Krasoff despite the fact he isn't very big as quick, should be able to maneuver himself around the ice, and Indianapolis will have its fourth power play opportunity of the night, the elbowing penalty against Paul Cruz. 129, the time of the penalty, the fourth power play for the ice, and the Eagles already in the first seven games of the season have given up 52 power play chances, add more for tonight. 56 in the early going, and this is only the eighth game of the year. One positive for Bob Francis, Jim, the Eagles penalty killing unit getting a lot of practice. <laughs> Which is not what he wants to see. Eagles have Harkins and Hafey up front, so two players that can score goals in the penalty killing department. Ice trying to center one. Boyer at the side of the goal, but Trefloff clears it away. Play to the side of the goal, Adam Bennett now for the ice. With Boyer to his right behind the goal, they try and pass it free to Boyer. Here's Zach Boyer, who played for the Kamloops Blazers of the Western League last year, to the point for St. Jacques. Back to the right wing point as the ice try and hold it in for Brad Lauer. Back to the point for the pass to Dropa, a little bit off the mark, and the ice have to go back. Here's Adam Bennett in his own side for Dropa, with 2.04 gone into the second. A 1-0 ice lead, Indianapolis in the power play, as they work it free at their own defense, and Dropa just uh, pokes it free on the far boards. Eagles uh, try and work it free, and a Salt Lake player, Harkins, tripped up, and this will nullify the Indianapolis power play. Okay, the score, one nothing ice, and you're watching IHL hockey from Indianapolis between the ice and the Golden Eagles. Introducing the birthday game from the Hoosier Lottery with a chance to win $3,000 a week for a whole year and lots of instant cash prizes. Happy 
happy birthday to you. With a birthday again, winning $3,000 a week for a year could be a piece of cake. Well, who did you expect? All the money went into prizes. Mike Barrick alongside the voice of the ice, Jim Barber. Play-by-play -play voice for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles here in Indianapolis at the Pepsi Coliseum. Eagles in the ice in a four-on-four -four situation for the next one minute as Darren Stoke on left wing. In across the ice line, tries to center one, but tipped right through the goal crease in Indianapolis control on the four-on-four. -four. Here is the play into the Salt Lake zone. Darren Stoke tries to take a nice player out of the play. It's Woodcroft now to the left of the goal. Stoke stays with him, and Woodcroft, who scored the lone goal tonight to Bancroft, his shot deflects wide. Play back of the Salt Lake goal, and Darren Stoke, the former Kansas City Blade and Muskegon Lumberjack, controls back of his net. Stoke in his second year for Salt Lake. Right defense for Kevin Guy, and here come the Golden Eagles. On the right side, it's Brose. Lead pass for Strooch. In alone, shoots, and LeBlanc gets a piece, I believe, and now Strooch centers one. Brose couldn't get a stick on it, and the ice break back. 1-0 Indianapolis. Good scoring chances for Salt Lake. And Bancroft at the left point, skies it off the glass to the side of the goal, and Wortman breaks out of there. Rob Kahn fiercely in a forecheck, and Wortman holds on. Six seconds left in the Salt Lake penalty as Brose just uh, pokes it right back in. That's it. The Eagles now on the power play. Cruz is back on, and for 43 seconds, Salt Lake will have the man advantage. one nothing, however, the ice leading, and they tip it right back into the Salt Lake zone. Truffle off himself, plays on the board, stolen by the ice. It's Rob Kahn trying to work it for the defenseman Tichi, but here comes Wortman back. For Chernomaz on his off wing, in across the line, but ahead of the play, Todd Gillingham. One stride on the right wing boards, offside at the defense, and this is only the second power play tonight, Jim, for the Salt Lake. Indianapolis with four chances. Again, same two teams tomorrow night, and for those folks here in the Midwest who have an opportunity to watch hockey, there will be some here at the Pepsi State Fairgrounds, start time 7.35. The numbers on the Salt Lake power play coming in 19%. Efficiency, the ice killing it off at 87%. Well, the Eagles uh, power play unit uh, here in the early going is mentioned. Not too bad, just under 19%. And Udeen clears it right back in. LeBeau, Chertemaz, and Gillingham up front. As Lauer, one of the main uh, penalty killers for the ice with St. Jacques up front. Here's the play to the left of the goal, Chernomaz holding on. It's uh, poked away by St. Jacques, but clear to the blue line. Udine holds it in. Here's Alex Udine on the right wing side, controlling the puck, shoots in the rolling puck and tipped away. Workman holds on to Udine. His shot tipped in front of the goal. They score! Rich Chernomaz let it fly. And the all-time leading goal scorer for Salt Lake parked himself to the right of the net. A power play goal, I believe. And the Golden Eagles have tied the game at one. Biggest problem for Indianapolis, LeBlanc's team had the power play, then that got neutralized when Indianapolis picked up the penalty, and only so much LeBlanc could do because most of the action very close to the crease as the Eagles celebrate the game-tying goal. This was a situation that happened on Saturday night when the ice had a lead against Fort Wayne and the Comets came back to win. I'm not sure if it was, yes, by two seconds, a power play goal, I believe, and the Golden Eagles have tied the game at one, and the play cleared right back into the... Indianapolis zone and Salt Lake in a four check. Hafey back of the goal. Eudine and Wortman on the assist and they drop it free on the right wing side. They say no power play goal and the puck is cleared now back of the goal and now finally wound right up to the right wing side. Actually you're by two seconds, it was not a power play goal, and the teams are in a 1-1 standoff. Here's Guy on the right wing side for Todd Harkins with Hafey and uh, Nicoluk up front. The pass ahead for Melrose into the neutral zone. Zigzags to center and tips it right back into the ice zone. Harkins in the forecheck. Ice, however, clear it away. A 1-1 tie. Rich Chernomaz lights it up for Salt Lake. And for Cherno, his third goal of the year as they rule an icing on the play. The Golden Eagles uh, had a chance with Chernomaz on this power play. We'll show you another look. Chernomaz is the one that ties it up. Look at the pressure in front of LeBlanc just to his right. As they're able to walk the puck in, one of the ice defenders screened right out in front of the slot. And that helped set up Chernomaz scoring as he beat LeBlanc to his left. Yeah, he'll thank uh, Todd Gillingham for the pick he set right in front of LeBlanc. And the Golden Eagles have tied the game at one. Rich Chernomaz scores his third goal of the year. And of course, Rich Chernomaz broke the franchise goal scoring record last year set by Doug Palazzari. Cherno this year has his sights set on the all-times games played and also 
the all-time scoring record set by Lyle Bradley. Ice control the puck into the neutral zone and tipped right back in to the Salt Lake zone. And the Eagles trying to work it free. Wortman on the boards to the left of the goal. Ice try and work it free back of the net for Craig Woodcroft. Try to center one, then tipped to the left of the Salt Lake goal. Here's the all-time ice leading scorer, Williams, to the side of the goal for Woodcroft. But Stoke able to poke it outside the blue line. And here's Kerry Clark, a former Indianapolis player, but tipped away at the defense and cleared right back into the left wing side. Stoke, or I said, should say uh, Strutz for Salt Lake, trying to work it free. LeBeau steals an errant pass, and the ice finally have no other choice but to clear it to center, a 1-1 tie. Now Wortman for Salt Lake, able to poke it off the boards to center, and Strutz able to poke it right back into the ice zone. Zone of the ice on the attack. St. Jacques moving in against Wortman. Cuts to the side of the goal. Now back of the goal. Centers one. Back to the left wing point. In front. Treffel off. Gets a piece. And Stoke trying to work it free. In front, Steve Tepper had a scoring chance. And Treffel off steers it aside. Ice back after it. And an icing called against Salt Lake. You're watching International League Hockey. You're also listening from Indianapolis between the ice and the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Hi, Bobby Leonard for National Car Sales. Just give us a shot. <laughs> no, a shot to give you a great deal. Like a 90 Geo Metro for just $133 a month. Or a 94 Tempo for only $74.95. Before you buy a car, truck, or van, give us a shot to earn your business. They're giving you a great deal. National Car Sales, out by the big old green sign at 7111 West Washington Street. Back to action here at the Pepsi Coliseum in Indianapolis, Indiana. The Eagles and the Indianapolis Ice tied at one. Ice trying to center one right through the goal crease. Now the play back of the goal. Controlling the puck is Steve Tepper. Trying to work it in front. Trefloff, the save on St. Jacques. Big rebound, and he falls on top with Lauer stationed in the goal crease area. And finally, they hold on. The referee, Kimberly, has his arm up. We're going to have a holding penalty right in front of the Salt Lake goaltender. There was a lot of congestion over there, and that puck was loose, and boy, it was like everybody jumping on a, on a loose bone there because you had six or seven people going at it. Brost is going to get two minutes for holding, and the ice will have their fifth power play chance. But that puck was loose right in the slot, right next to the crease area, and it looked as if somebody would have a shot up, but everybody was held up. Lauer and St. Jacques both in front of Andre Trefiloff. The penalty again, Todd Brose for holding at 6.42. Brose who played for Dave King, the coach of the Canadian Olympic team for the past three seasons with the Canadian national squad in the penalty box. The fifth power play for the ice and they have more than doubled Salt Lake in that department. 5-2 now in favor of the Chicago Blackhawks top affiliate. One of the rules changes this year, if you're not already aware, if you hold the stick that can be called a two minute penalty and that's what Brose was whistled for. Face off uh, in the Salt Lake zone. Hafey and Harkins up front. And for the most part, the Eagles leading scorer from last year, Sean Hafey with the second leading scorer, Harkins, up front to kill off the penalties. And here is Harkins on the left wing side. One against two into the ice zone in his backhand. Shoots one. And LeBlanc, I believe, got a piece of it in the ice break back. Power play Indianapolis. A 1-1 tie. 12.59 to go in the second period. Ice trying to work it free, but Hafey steals. He's upended, and we're going to have a penalty, I believe, against a defenseman on the far side, Dropa. It was Hafey who stole it, broke the center ice, and was upended into the neutral zone. Frankly, Mike, that wasn't a bad penalty because Hafey may have had a breakaway for Salt Lake City, at least not bad from the Indianapolis perspective. And once again, the ice with a power play chance negating their own efforts, and that's not something that will sit well with John Marks of Indianapolis. But I'll tell you what, Bob Francis is pleased with his penalty killing unit, a hooking call called against the Czechoslovakian Dropa, and the Golden Eagles will have the power play in just a bit. Again, Dropa for hooking, time of the penalty, 7.07, .07, and so Lake uh, will have their third chance. Four on four for the next 135, so it will be a very abbreviated 25 second power play for so Lake. LeBeau and Chernomaz up front for the Eagles, Stoke and Wortman on defense. Face off will be into the neutral zone for the Indianapolis Ice. Adam Bennett will be on defense as LeBeau to drop into the neutral zone. And it will be Krivo, Krivo Krasov up front for the Indianapolis Ice. Very good. That's not an easy name to handle the first time around. There have been some new ones this year in the league. And 
Always a challenge the first time around. And the ice control the puck into the neutral zone. It is played on left wing for Bennett across the line and controlling the puck for the ice and dumping it in is the rookie Carl Dykehouse. Eagles Stoke headmans for LeBeau and here comes Salt Lake. LeBeau on right wing for Chernomaz. Into the ice zone for LeBeau. Shoots! He need miss going for the short side. And Indianapolis break back on the right wing side. And it's the flow cleared into the Salt Lake territory in front. Saved by Trefloff on the player cutting in. Andreevsky into the Salt Lake zone. And the Eagles play it to center. And the ice control into the neutral zone. Eagles in the ice in a four-on-four -four situation in this 1-1 one -one tie. Ice trying to work it free to the Salt Lake blue line. But Wortman leads for LeBeau. Off his skate in the center. Had he caught it, he might have had a break. Here's LeBeau and across the Indianapolis blue line. Trying to center one for Udine. But poked away. And Bennett for the ice, controls the puck, he clears it off the boards outside the line, and Indianapolis now on the attack. In across the line now, Andreevsky holding on, spinning, trying to center one, but the pass across in the slot off the mark. Now back of the goal, Chernomaz is trying to clear it, held in by the ice at the left wing point. Bancroft across for Tichy, Eagles guy ties him up, it's centered, and tipped outside the blue line, and the ice have to go back. 1-1 one, one our score, 11.33 to go in the second period, here in Indianapolis, Indiana. And Rich Chernomaz winds it to center. And the ice control the puck in the neutral zone. Six seconds left in the Salt Lake penalty. And falling on top is Steve Bancroft right at the Indianapolis blue line. A lot of fun watching four on four hockey. There's a lot more space to move. And we saw some great end to end action there. Of course, one of the new penalties this year. They sets up a situation four on four. Again, those of you living in Indianapolis with a chance to watch hockey tomorrow night, come on out to the Pepsi Coliseum. With the faceoff set for 7.30, the same two teams tomorrow. And for information, call 924-1234. If anybody from Salt Lake City is interested, the area code is 317. Long distance phone call there. Eagles uh, have games Friday and Saturday next week. October 30th, the 31st, the Halloween game at the Delta Center. And not only that, but next Friday will be our KXIV simulcast from the Delta Center. Eagles and the Milwaukee Admirals. And boy, the Admirals loaded this season. Here is the play in the neutral zone, and Udine for Salt Lake and across the line. Has the player cutting in front post, but tipped away to the left of the goal on the ice. Just clear it to center. A 1-1 tie. We're almost halfway through into the second period. Kerry Clark back after it, and he pokes it free on the right side. Ice steal it, and the shot going wide by Brad Lauer as he whipped it from about 20 feet out of the ice. Have to go back. It's Adam Bennett now as uh, the ice was shorthanded for the moment. Now the team's at even strength again, and Indianapolis just clear it to the Salt Lake Blue Line. Here's Kevin Guy on the right side for Kerry Clark, who played with the ice in their first season in 1988-89 as an independent team. It's Juan Free into the neutral zone. Ice on the attack. Long shot. Treffle off the save as Lauer let it fly from center, and Clark on the right wing boards just pokes it right back into the Indianapolis zone. It's Steve Bancroft back after it. Icing is the call. The score here, 1-1 from the Pepsi Coliseum, and you're watching and listening to International Hockey League action from Indianapolis, the ice and the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. The Blackhawks are coming. The Chicago Blackhawks battle the Washington Capitals in an election night face-off at Market Square Arena. Tuesday, November 3rd at 7.30. It's your only chance to see NHL hockey in Indianapolis this year. You will not find tickets to a National Hockey League game for a lower price. Come join us as we freeze the floor of Market Square Arena one more time for the NHL Election Night Face-Off. Alex Nikoluk, uh, Todd Harkins, and Sean Hafey, the forward line for Salt Lake, and the veteran uh, for the ice, Sean Williams, headbands and across the line. Here's the play to the left of the goal. It's just banged by Williams behind the goal. Ice player Kahn knocked down. Nikoluk headbands for Hafey, tipped away to the top of the circle, and Salt Lake's uh, Harkins able to break the center. Williams for the ice with Kahn and Woodcroft as Hafey now for Salt Lake. Shoots one high over top of the goal. Salt Lake in a fort check. However, Williams clears a net out. Eagles Melrose for Salt Lake pokes it in. Melrose has played the whole, full season from last year and is a long game played consecutive streak for Salt Lake. The play back of the goal. Harkins now for the Eagles trying to center one. Melrose lets it go to the right point. Wortman turns, shoots. That uh, banks off the backboards and wide. LeBlanc himself plays it on left wing and the ice just clear it on the left wing side. 
9.20 left in the second, a 1-1 standoff. Here's Woodcroft and across the line trying to center one. Streaking across was the second-year player, Rob Kahn. Now Williams trying to work it free, but Harkins breaks back. And the Cleveland native, who was second in scoring for Salt Lake last year. Stick handles into the neutral zone. Ice steal it, and a break for the Indianapolis hockey team. Here is the player in front. Quick across the player in front, Krivo Krasov, and the deflection up into the stands, a stop to play. He's only 18 years of age, a real fancy skater as he was able to burst into the Salt Lake zone. He joined the team last week just hours or moments, if you will, before the ice skated against Milwaukee in the Bradley Center. As you take a look at the shots on goal here in the first two periods, dominated primarily by Indianapolis, and Krivo Krasov was quite frankly lost out there a little bit. And so was the ice front scoring line because they had to do some shifting. As a result, they didn't play very well. Krivo Krasov on the ice right now with the forward Andreevsky and St. Jacques, who led the Western Hockey League in scoring last year. Here's the play in front of the goal now as the ice now work it back of the net. It's the forward St. Jacques in the forecheck. Andreevsky back to the right wing point. The shot right on and steered aside by Trefilov as Bennett let it fly from the right wing point. And the Eagles clear it down. LeBeau, Gillingham, and also Chernum as icing is the call on the faceoff. We'll come all the way back. Of course, Jim, if the defensive team shoots it all the way down from their own side of center, the faceoff will come all the way back into that team's defensive zone. Always good to explain it because we have a lot of folks watching and listening for the first time around, and hockey may be a foreign sport to them. And the rules aren't very complicated, but in order to enjoy the game, you have to learn the rules. Everybody asks me the toughest rules in hockey, the offside, the offside pass, and the icing. You get that down, and you have a majority of the stoppages of plays. Key individuals here in the arena tonight, Tom Berry, the commissioner of the International Hockey League, and the general manager of the Chicago Blackhawks, Mike Keenan, in attendance. Paul Baxter, the assistant coach of the Blackhawks, expected to be here this weekend, the former head coach in Salt Lake. And the ice cleared right back into the Salt Lake zone, and Kevin Guy has to go back. On the left wing side for Stoke is the ice fiercely in a four check, but Chernomaz able to work out of there. The lone goal scorer for Salt Lake able to play at the center, and the ice break it up on the right wing boards. Lead pass ahead into the Salt Lake zone. Controlling the puck, however, is Stoke on left wing. Right side for Gaunt. Able to breeze to center. Left wing Gillingham darts into the Indianapolis zone. Trying to center one. Does, but tipped away. Now LeBeau just backs it right back behind the Indianapolis goal. Gillingham trying to center one. LeBeau trying to fight off with the Indianapolis player Bennett on left wing. And a break for the ice into the center ice area. Andreevsky just overskates the puck. And the Eagles clear it right back into the ice zone where Bennett controls. Salt Lake change up defensively. A 1-1 tie. Seven and a half minutes to go in the middle period. Glad you've joined us uh, here tonight in Indianapolis and in Salt Lake. And back of the play, we're going to have a stop and a penalty, I believe, against the Indianapolis Ice. The score, 1-1, and you're watching and listening to International Hockey League action from Indianapolis between the Ice, Salt Lake Golden Eagles. What's the best kept secret in the shipping business? Speedy Incorporated. Since 1972, Speedy has provided critical shipment connections from Chicago to Miami. Speedy also provides interstate trucking services for 3,500 customers, including Indiana's Customs Examination Site. If you're looking to ship anything in or outside Indiana, look to Speedy. Call toll-free 1-800-428-5002. The best kept secret in the shipping business is Speedy Incorporated. Mike Barak, voice of the Golden Eagles. Jim Barber, voice of the ice alongside. Sergei Kriva Krasov, a high stick penalty. Time of the call, 13.35. Salt Lake on their fourth power play. They are 0 for 3 in the game tonight. They score their uh, goal at an even strength situation. Set up by a power play just two seconds after Dropa had come back on. Ice try and dump it in front, and Trefloff steers it aside. And Harkins on left wing for Salt Lake. Power play Eagles here in the second period. Ice fiercely in a fort check St. Jacques and back to get away is Wortman for the Golden Eagles. On the cross ice pass for Udine and Wortman, right side pass for Harkins. Down the right wing boards into the ice zone trying to cut to the middle. LeBlanc able to pounce on top and holds on with 6.46 to go in the second period and pushing and shoving in front of the goal and it was the player Tony Herkus for the ice involved for the Indianapolis hockey team. Herkus certainly was involved early. Now you see Tishi and Bancroft Todd Harkins, I believe, for Salt Lake as well in the midst of it. We haven't had any scraps tonight. And There's Lauer. Lauer just threw his man Heapy down the ice. 
And I'm sure well, we'll have penalties right there. Uh, on the play. Harkins to the left of the goal also. And big McCarthy over there for the Golden Eagles as well. So I believe we'll have penalties. It all started when LeBlanc made the original save, a very innocent looking play. And then with the uh, traffic developed from there after LeBlanc had held on. It's been a tightly played game, so it's not a surprise something like this might happen. A very defensive-minded game as indicative of the score. Tony Herkus is going to have a seat, but he's going to plead his case before he goes off. Hafey being escorted to the penalty box as well. Herkus, 26 years of age from Thunder Bay, Ontario, played with the St. Louis Blues and the Quebec Nordiques, two years at the University of North Dakota, and Sean Hafey out of Michigan State, so two collegiate players sent to the box. And Herkus was telling me about his young daughters, ages three and one. He gets a chance to see every couple of weeks in St. Louis. Become and a family man and really enjoys it. But right now the family man's in the box. 13-14, the time of the penalties. The Eagles still have a minute 21 left on the ice penalty and will have a power play, but we'll see how the referee Kimmerly sorts them out right in front of the Indianapolis goal. And I would suspect that it would still be a, a Salt Lake power play. I would suspect matching minors, but we'll just have to wait and see in front of the Indianapolis goal. Interesting, uh, Jim, no scraps tonight. A lot of pushing and shoving, but no uh, dropping of the gloves and no rights and lefts here tonight from the Pepsi Coliseum. Well, for those folks who are listening and watching in Salt Lake City, if you like your hockey defensively, we're getting a lot of it tonight. Speaking of Salt Lake City, visited there a few years ago to cover the NCAA basketball tournament. What a beautiful town. Uh, in the shadows of the Wasatch Mountains, is that correct? No doubt about it. And the Delta Center, the home of the Golden Eagles, uh, beautiful facility for the NBA's Utah Jazz and the Golden Eagles. And I'll tell you what, uh, last year, the first year of uh, operation of the building, and this year, year two, and they've learned some things in the first year, and it should be exciting here in year two at the Delta Center. It seats 20,000, but for hockey, about 10,500 strong seats for International Hockey League play. And they've sorted the penalty outs, uh, penalties out, and it looks like a two-man power play will develop for Salt Lake. Urkis is going to be on the bench for two minutes, along with Kriva Krasov, and the Eagles will have the best opportunity to take the lead. At least those are the numbers on the boards, and by the look of the defenders, it's five-on-three hockey. Hafey, I believe, will pick up one minor, and I believe the Indianapolis player will pick up two. Uh, Kirkus will pick up a double minor for roughing, I believe. Or one roughing, roughing and slash, one slash, actually. Uh -huh. And Sean Hafey for Salt Lake. Roughing. Picks up a roughing minor. So, as mentioned, the Golden Eagles will have this five on three, 13 14, the time of the penalties here at the Pepsi Coliseum. Salt Lake yet to score on the power play. They failed on their first opportunity, but a big five on three with Chernamaz. Up front, LeBeau and Harkins. Workman on the point with Udine. Ice up Sean Williams to take the draw. Eagles win it. And LeBeau drops for Udine. To the left wing side for Workman. As the Eagles uh, wheel and deal on the power play. Chernamaz to Workman at the point. Udine a shot. That caroms over top of the goal. And ricochets to the blue line. Eagles hold it in. Chernamaz now to the right of the goal. Trying to work it for Harkins. Back to the point for Wortman on this Salt Lake man advantage chance in this 1-1 game. A two-man power play. Wortman fires. That just deflected wide but bounces right to Udine. Right point for Wortman. Hands it free to Chernamaz as the ice try and work it out defensively. Udine cuts in. Centers one. But the pass a little bit off the mark and Chernamaz leaves it free to the left wing shot. Wortman now on the right wing boards. Udine a shot. That deflects wide. Eagles aren't getting a shot to the goal. Here's Wortman at the middle of the blue line. Right wing side for Udine. Fakes the shot. Hands it to the side of the goal. Eagles trying to center one for Harkins. Tipped away and cleared, but not out. Now it does go outside the blue line. Great defensive play by the ice. Still 20 seconds left on a two-man advantage, so Indianapolis cannot relax. Here's Chernamaz cuts and shoots, and a pad sail for LeBlanc and clear it away. That's just about it in the first penalty. Eagles will still have another 40 seconds to go. After that, it's cleared right back down by the forward uh, Lauer into the Salt Lake zone, and the first player is back on. We mentioned in the start of this broadcast how defensive-minded it would be. You're seeing some great defense right now on the kill. Here is uh, Struch now for Salt Lake. 
holding on. The rookie for the Golden Eagles played 12 games with Salt Lake last year. Holding on on the far side. Now for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Here's Strooch. Shoots. That deflects wide. 15 seconds left in the second penalty against Turkis. Now it's uh, Udine to the side of the goal. Trying to work it free at the point now. Here is the play for Guy. His shot over top of the net. Strooch trying to dig it free. Gillingham now on the far side. That's it. Ice killed it off. Gillingham shoots. Pad save. Big rebound. And the block falls on top. Lots of red shirts in front of the Indianapolis goal. And now McCarthy wants a piece of the defenseman Adam Bennett. And the linesman in a separate. Great scoring chances for the Golden Eagles at the tail end after they failed to score in that two-man advantage. Have to make note of that fine defensive play on the part of the ice because while no scoring is done and we don't know what happens in the next 4.43 of this period, as you look at McCarthy being escorted off, the key is the fine defensive play can turn the game around. Well, the ice fans are giving a pretty good round of applause to their penalty killing unit. Now Sandy McCarthy has been escorted to the box for Salt Lake. I'll tell you what, it's fun watching these two teams play. It's a great defensive game tonight. It really is, and over the years, as mentioned earlier, especially in this building, very tight games. I remember a game in which Steve Gannett was in goal for Salt Lake, and it was an afternoon game. He actually lost a shot in the sunlight. They have uh, the windows here at the Pepsi Coliseum, and if you have an afternoon game, goaltenders actually can lose the puck in the sunlight. Never seen it before in professional hockey. McCarthy, a 10 minute misconduct, 15-17 the time. Still we will skate 5 on 5 with 4.43 to go in the second and again we're tied at 1-1. Mike Barak alongside Jim Barber from the Pepsi Coliseum. And he's seen guys like Terry Sawchuk and Ed Jackman and some of the great ones over the years and he ranks Trefiloff as among the quickest goaltenders he's ever seen. Some of the standings in this early part of the season. How about the Atlanta Knights? What's their story? Well, the Tampa Bay Lightning, their parent team surprised, and Atlanta doing more of the same, and they're doing it without Manon Rayon. <laughs> she is the goaltender, of course, that had gained notoriety. Was the third goaltender there in Atlanta. Is, uh, the uh, Knights of Strong have started off very, very well. But those b hockey fans who are unknown to uh, her story, as we look at Clary shooting for the right side, uh, she is a she, and that is yes. unusual in, in this she sport of hockey. She is in Atlanta, although they don't expect her to see much uh, action this year. And she'll be in Indianapolis in a couple of weeks as Khan sends it all the way down. Guy able to set it up along the near boards. No score in this hockey game, and only 3.45 to go in the first period. And here's Chonomaz. Chonomaz sends it up to the neutral zone for Indianapolis. Now Cleary. Uh, Clary tries to set it loose in the slot. And here come the Golden Eagles, two on two, blasting from the point on Ray LeBlanc as McCarthy took a long shot, but LeBlanc was there down to his knees to make the stop. Great to see LeBlanc with the Team USA mask. Uh, McCarthy, a 20-year-old, blast one down the right side, and the Milwaukee Admirals with Michelle Mangeau and Steve Tuttle, and we talked about Stalinkoff in first place in the Midwest, and the San Diego Gulls with 17 players with National Hockey League experience off to a perfect 6-0 start. They had a fine scoring machine last year, one any, were unable to do anything with it, but so far this year they have been perfect. We'll update the I and the National Hockey League between periods one and two. Now here's Dykos, Dykos up to Kevin St. Jacques. He goes back on defense. St. Jack doesn't have the numbers as he tries to get around his man. Oh, Udine couldn't do it. Alex Udine with a crunching check on St. Jack, the best hit of the night. And St. Jack is shaken up. Ice keep it in though. Kramer Krasoff shooting wide left. Oh, Udine put a hit on him, didn't he? Yeah, it's the another member of that Moscow Dynamo team, Alex Udine, and he is a very physical defenseman when he wants to be, and that was a clean hit into the Salt Lake zone. No offsides call there as Herkus dumps it in for Indianapolis. Gillingham tries to get it out of the zone, but the ice keep it in from the far point. Andreevsky is 28, and there will be a penalty coming up against the Golden Eagles and against Todd Gillingham, but we're back with them more in a moment. You're watching the eye from Indianapolis between the ice and the Golden Eagles. The year of the California Gold Rush. 
1849, the Yerschlitz began brewing beer. The gold rush left California with 273 ghost towns. Schlitz brought fame to a little Wisconsin town named Milwaukee. Since that time, many have searched in vain for gold, while the truly fortunate have always known where to find it. This is the third power play chance for Indianapolis. No score in this hockey game, and only 2.37 left in the first period. With Mike Barrick, I'm Jim Barber from the Pepsi Coliseum in Indianapolis, Indiana. Two minutes elbowing against Todd Gillingham, puts the ice up a man. Eagles have a couple of offensive forwards to kill it off in Todd Harkins and Sean Hafey. Darren Stoke and Kevin Guy on the back line. Now Clary up to center ice and skates into the Salt Lake zone to set the offense. Bounces it off the boards for Zach Boyer. Boyer back to the point. Clary tries to knock it in. It's deflected for Zach Boyer. They set up against the box and a shot by Lauer to the left of Trefiloff. Now the body being applied by Herkus and Clary, but cleared all the way down to LeBlanc. 1.15 left on the ice power play. 1.50 to go in the first period. Here's Steve Bancroft, the fine defenseman for Indianapolis. Bancroft, a long shot, actually shoots at the dump it in for Woodcroft. Now Woody behind the net. Ice looking, trying to get out in front. Truffleoff made the first save. Wait, Craig Woodcroft had the best scoring chance right there. Try to wrap it around in the slot. Stoke tried to clear, unable to do so. Indianapolis centering out in front again. And again, they miss an opportunity. It was Woodcroft again from in tight. Two great scoring chances for the Indianapolis forward. Ice walking in again behind the net, looking to wrap around against Trefiloff, but it's loose in the slot. And it goes all the way back to Ivan Dropa. Now Dropa on a one-timer. Bancroft! And they score, and it's 1-0 Indianapolis. Well, that was a deflection. Bancroft took it for the right point. A couple of ice players in front of Trefiloff. He may have been screened. It was low to the ice, and that's what you want to do when you're on the point. Keep it low for that deflection. I think a good deflection. Trefloff may not have seen it in a 1-0 ice lead. Unlike the two Indianapolis power plays previously, the ice finally got something going and were able to keep the puck in the zone. The key to any type of attacking is to keep it in the other team's end. Bancroft gets credit for the goal. It's his first of the season. And here's another look. Yeah, it was back behind the goal. The ice tried to dump it in front for Woodcroft. It worked back to the left wing point. And then it was crossed to Bancroft and let it fly. And it was, uh, may have gone off a Salt Lake player and behind Trefloff for the 1-0 lead. So the ice get the power play goal. Teams back in full and equal strength. Here come the Eagles shooting for the wing out in front. Intended for LeBeau. And LeBeau almost got himself the game tying goal. As we suspected, it was deflected. And we think it will be. The shot from Bancroft, it was definitely deflected in front. And we'll see if the scoring play has been changed up here. Bancroft will get an assist. He let the shot go from the point. And as it was shot, it was the player Woodcroft in front of the goal getting a stick on it and deflecting it behind the goaltender Trefloff sprawled out in front of the Salt Lake goal. So Woodcroft gets the goal his second of the season with Bancroft and Dropa getting assists at 18.53. Of the opening period, the ice out shooting the Golden Eagles 12-6, but they're shooting a one-timer. Broke it up in the slot. Tishi had his stick on it. Ties up Gillingham. Now Chernomaz. Patrick LeBeau. LeBeau very dangerous behind the net. Taken away from him by Williams. Half a minute to go in the opening period. Now here's Milan Tishi. 1-0 Indianapolis. Gillingham falls down to the ice. He was in the box moments ago for Alboy, and that set up the ice power play goal. Now Kahn behind the net. A low-scoring hockey game tonight, just about ready to wrap up period one. Eagles bring it into the zone with one last shot on LeBlanc, and that might have hit the post. Maybe even hit the crossbars. LeBeau let it fly. It was stopped early on a break in front, pushing and shoving to the left of the Indianapolis goal, but another great scoring chance for LeBlanc uh, for the Golden Eagles LeBeau and twice has been denied by the Indianapolis Ice. It was interesting, Mike. You watched Ray LeBlanc at the end of the period after that shot that either hit the crossbar or the post, and he just put his head down as if to take a deep breath and say, thank goodness. Goaltender's best friend is the goal post, and that may have grazed, as you mentioned, either off the post or deflecting off the crossbar. 
He stopped the bow earlier in the period and a 1-0 ice lead. The ice out shooting Salt Lake by a 12 to 6 mark. So the Eagles will go to their locker room. So will Indianapolis and we'll have what amounts to about a 15 minute break before the two teams come back for period number two. We're going to take a break right here from the Pepsi Coliseum. You're watching the IHL between the ice and Golden Eagles. when you really need to bank on Sunday? Sure, you can do the simple things in an automated teller, but I can answer your questions and help you with all kinds of banking. IMB makes it easier to get to your money. That's why our supermarket banking centers are even open on Sunday. So come in and see me. I'm here to help you every Sunday. Now isn't that convenient? Sunday banking at IMB. We're working for you. And frankly, that's a more convenient way to bank. Attention kids, join executive media communications consultants at the studios of American Cable Vision on Saturday, October 31st from noon until 6 for the Halloween Happening, a fun fundraiser for hemophilia. Legendary Cemetery hosts the event featuring cakewalks, costume contests, stage shows and treats, plus special guests such as Captain Cable, McGruff the Crime Dog, the Crash Test Dummies and more. And new this year, a haunted castle. Kids get four free tickets for games and food and more tickets are available at 25 cents each. So put on a costume and join the fun on October 31st at American Cable Vision. Bud has 10,000 flavors, two convenient locations, and will make each and every morning a little brighter, no matter what the weather. Why, of course, it's the fine grind. With locations in Union Station and Bank One on the Circle, you know, they're a step above any gourmet coffee shop you may have visited in the past. The owner, Lou Ann Johnson, personally selects each and every one of the fine grinds coffees for quality, taste, and freshness. And since they roast their coffee just a pound at a time, you can be assured you will never again brew a stale cup of coffee. Did you know that some coffees use potato byproducts or even scorched chaff? You know, that's the part of the coffee that's supposed to be thrown away. Well, no fillers or additives are ever used in fine grind coffees. Just 100% premium coffee. The fine grind uses only the Swiss water process for decaffeinating our coffees. No chemicals. Even the special flavorings the fine grind uses have no sugars or harmful chemicals. You choose the roast, you choose the flavor and the grind. It's coffee your way. The fine grind. More than just taste. And welcome back to Indianapolis, the Pepsi Coliseum here on the city's west side, if you will. Jim Barber along with Mike Barrick. It's a defensive game so far with the ice leading Salt Lake City 1-0. And we've heard so much about Andre Trefilov. And quite frankly, after seeing him perform in the first period, he's everything as good as advertised. One of the best gloves that you will see as a goaltender in professional hockey. And my gosh, a couple of uh, great scoring chances in the slot. But the goal was a deflection, and not much a goaltender can do on something like that. Ice have had three power play game or opportunities in this game. It was really the last opportunity where they got things going. And actually, I thought Trefiloff has kept them in this game. It could be worse than one nothing. Trefiloff had a couple of dangerous scoring chances. In fact, uh, Woodcroft had two point blank chances in front of the goal, and the goaltender uh, Trefiloff made a couple of tremendous saves, and then of course the deflection to make it one nothing. We're looking at Trefiloff's fine defensive play right here in the ice. Shooting from a point right there. Trefiloff, boy, you have to judge speed at such a short distance he was able to do so. It was that great glove of his. He did the stretch uh, to make that particular save, but you could see the reach and the tremendous quick glove from Andre Trefiloff. He's 23 years of age. Like a line drive in baseball from the hot corner. It comes at you, and all you do is react, and that's what he did there. Boy, he sure did. And, you know, it's interesting. He had all that experience in the Olympics, and it's a tough goal in Calgary. You have the goaltenders, Mike Vernon, Jeff Reese, Jason Bizzotti, and here Trevor Kidd. The Flames are loaded in goal, and Trefiloff performed well here in the first period. And as we know, the ice aren't bad either. Ray LeBlanc, the Olympic goaltender for the United States team, who took the United States to a fourth place finish in the Winter Games last year. LeBlanc is pitching a shutout so far, but frankly, he has had his breaks, and at the end of the first period, the Eagles on the last rush almost tied it. We're looking at one of LeBlanc's saves as he looks at the action for the near side 
and a quick shot in on him, and LeBlanc is playing well so far tonight. Sandy McCarthy with the drive down the right side as he uh, worked in from his right point position at the top of the circle, and he also made a couple of bigger saves earlier in the period, Jim, on Patrick LeBeau, a clear-cut breakaway about 10 minutes into the first, and then on top of that, about uh, 10 seconds to go in the period, LeBeau was in once more, and it may have hit the crossbar of the goalpost. Nevertheless, the ice maintained their 1-0 lead. LeBeau, eight goals, five assists coming in, 13 points. Obviously a very big concern on the part of John Marks, and they have held him in check, if you will, although he is not a guy you hold in check very long. No, uh, he had a hat trick all in one period in the game uh, Wednesday night against the Phoenix Roadrunners, and my gosh, when he gets going, goaltenders uh, will have it tough. He scored his three goals on about four shots in the third period Wednesday night. All right, let's show you the one Indianapolis goal that has made a difference in this game. It came on the power play in just a minute or so before this period ended. Some deflections out in front, and eventually Woodcroft will get the goal. Bancroft took the shot from the right point as it was a great pass from the left wing uh, side. Bancroft teed it up, and then with a couple of players in front, including Woodcroft, to screen the goaltender in front of the net for Salt Lake Trefiloff, it was a low shot, low to the ice, and eventually Woodcroft was there to get a piece of it. Right in front of the sprawling Salt Lake netminder, it goes low to the ice in a 1-0 Indianapolis lead, and that's where we stand through a total of 20 minutes of play. Well, thank goodness for that one goal, or otherwise we wouldn't have a scoring summary. Well, no question about it. It was uh, the scoring play for the Indianapolis ice, and it was a scoring play by Woodcroft in front. Coming again on the power play at 18:53. So far, shots on goal. Favoring Indianapolis 12-6, the ice have had three times as many power play chances. I can't imagine Coach Francis being thrilled about that. No, the Eagles traditionally have been a team that have out-penalized the opposition last year over 100 power play opportunities against than four, and that's a, a stat that Bob Francis would like to see erased. This year it's been toned down a bit, but again, 3-1 in the first period. He would like to reverse that to, to change the momentum and change the score. And it's a 1-0 hockey game. Again, I'm Jim Barber along with Mike Barrick. And right now we're going to take a break. When we come back, Bob Lamy will talk with the great Ray LeBlanc of Indianapolis. You're watching the ice and the Golden Eagles tonight. A split feed, if you will. The IHL here in Indianapolis from the Pepsi Coliseum. Stay with us. We look at it as, as electronic direct mail because you're able to actually pinpoint the areas that you want to be in, the homes, you know exactly where it's going. Repetition builds reputation, and we feel that that's what we're accomplishing when we're dealing with the interconnect. Cable, television, the interconnect is definitely a major factor in, the, in, in this market. The best thing about uh, advertising on cable is knowing that our commercials are running in a controlled, targeted environment. That is also cost effective. <laughs> Plug it in and electrify your life. See the power? Seize the power. What happens when you want to know your bank balance? At midnight, even though my banking center is closed. INB's customer information hotline is open. Anytime you have financial questions, you deserve prompt answers. That's why. INB's customer information hotline never closes. You can call us toll free from anywhere in the country. So when you bank with us, you're never out of touch. With INB's customer information hotline, we're working for you. 24 hours a day. This is the medal Schlitz just won at the Great American Beer Festival. Schlitz won Best American Lager Beer, beating several major brands. We're proud of this medal, but we're even more proud of the quality and great taste of Schlitz beer. So choose what the judges at the Great American Beer Festival chose. Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. Ray, we got the Salt Lake City Golden Eagles in here tonight, and it's been a, an unusual schedule. You played two games, you're off five days, you played two, you're off five. How has that affected you, or has it? 
Uh, you know, when you're off for a whole week, you know, it's, uh, it's good in a sense in the beginning of the season because you get a bunch of players come in and uh, they get used to each other practicing. The more you practice, the better you get, but you need to play games, you know, that's important. A week, five days off, it's kind of tough, you know, the first period, you know, your legs aren't really into it and, and uh, you're, you're a period behind, but uh, we've been working hard this week and uh, I think that won't affect us. Go back and assess the weekends. The first weekend in Fort Wayne, you guys played great. Play a very good game in Milwaukee, come back home. Played well against Fort Wayne, it just didn't seem like you got the bounces. Yeah, we didn't really. Um, you know, I thought we played really well in Milwaukee. You know, we had a couple of breaks, we could have beat them. And uh, you know, we, we showed that we, we can beat the better teams. But uh, Sunday's game, I think our hearts were in it, but maybe maybe some of our minds weren't in it. But uh, we had a couple of bad bounces. You know, they had a couple of goals into my, my crease. And uh, some refs call them and some refs don't, but if that ref would have called them, it would have been a different game. What about your game right now? Are you, you pleased with the way things are going for you? Uh, yeah, I am. And, you know, there's always things you got to work on. You know, it's uh, you never play a perfect game. And, uh, you know, I've been working on some things this week that a couple goals I went in uh, last weekend I've been working on. And this weekend, hopefully, that won't happen again. Salt Lake comes in. They've won a couple of games at home against Phoenix. They've played a couple of games. Do you have to be prepared for them maybe having maybe better legs to start the game than you might? Uh, no, every team has a different type of style and stuff. And this week we've been working mostly on uh, their power play and uh, and how they break out of their zone and stuff. So, you know, it's, it's kind of good. It's like a football team practicing yeah. for a whole week playing against uh, a team Sunday. But, uh, you know, we've been working on, uh, like I said, their, their type of style of play and, uh, and we're going to come out and hopefully make sure they didn't get any points on the board. Our team's different, Ray, when you face Salt Lake or Fort Wayne. Do you know that they play differently than some other club in the league? Uh, yeah, you know, every team has a different style, like I said. And uh, you have to approach different you know, team differently. You know, they have different breakouts, different power plays and stuff. And every team has a special, uh, has one really good special uh, thing that they do on their power play. And they have one big line, or some teams have two. So you got to play them kind of different than others. What about your defense? You got different defensemen in front of you throughout the game. Do you change the way you play or what you do pertaining to who's in front of you? Well, our defense plays basically been told to play the same type of style, and they they expect that their other team to do the same, play against them. So all I do in different defense, I just talk to them, and uh, they know what they have to do, and I know what I have to do. And I just got to help them out a little bit and let them know if there's a guy on them or, or there's an open wing or uh, they're changing or is a uh, penalty going to be over against us or for us. And, um, you know, we all have the same goal in mind. And uh, yeah, just all I have to do is just talk to them. They, they all know what to do. Well, this is a team to me that looks like it's young, but it looks like before the season's over, it's going to be an awfully good hockey club here. Do you get the same feeling? I do. They've been, we've been all working hard and uh, they have good attitudes. and. And they know that, uh, you know, if you do well here, you can move up top. And uh, we have the same goal in mind to play up in Chicago. And, uh, you know, to do that, you have to play well here. And uh, I think we will. Do you look at other teams, for example, example Trefloff coming in here tonight at Salt Lake, played in the Olympic Games, had the same experience you did. Did you get to see him much and know what he's like? Well, we played uh, Canada a few times, about 16 times. So I've got to see Trevor Kidd play a few times. He's a good goalie. And uh, it won't be an easy, easy time scoring on them. What about this hockey club as far as getting the first goal? Is that an important thing for you or for the team to, to score first and get the lead in games like this? It's important at home, I think, because then you get the crowd really get into the game. Um, long as there's no goal, I think the crowd kind of gets bored and kind of puts them out of the game. But uh, I think it's a, it's a big thing for us is to get out of the gate fast and score early and get the other team off balance. So it's, it's, it's important to have a good start. How about you? Is it important to not give up, or do you just throw it out if you give up the first one and say, hey, that's only one? Yeah, it's, it's basically it. You know, it's, it's a, I try not to let in the goal, especially early in the game, but if it does happen, just throw it out of your mind because it's still got 16 for 59 minutes or whatever is left in the game. Ray, you've played very, very well. Keep it going, and lots of luck tonight and throughout the season, but you played awfully well here. Thank you. Thanks. Bankers hours? You won't find them at INV. Look, we know you can't stop everything just to get to the bank. So now, many INV banking centers are open Saturdays. You gotta like that. Saturday banking, right here at INV. And we're making banking easier on weekdays. By keeping the lobbies in many of our centers open until the early evening. And frankly, that's a more convenient way to bank. Saturday banking at INV. We're working for you.
Now isn't that convenient? What can you do with a wet basement? Call Jack Grant's Basement Dewatering Systems. We'll install an attractive and affordable dewatering system that delivers proven results guaranteed. We've installed over 1 million feet since 1978. That's over 6,000 satisfied customers. No excavation is necessary and affordable financing is available. Reclaim your wet basement and turn it into usable living space. Call right now. Jack Grant's Basement Dewatering Systems, 255-2425. 255-2425. Jim Barber and Mike Barrick back at the Pepsi Coliseum between periods. Just about set to start period number two with the ice leading 1-0. If you are wondering what these two strange voices are doing here on this broadcast, well, let us explain. Mike does the play-by-play -play for the Golden Eagles back in Salt Lake City. I do the radio play-by-play -play of the ice here in Indianapolis. Bob Lamy is the play-by-play -play voice of television, and tonight we're sharing a feed back to the West. Bob Lamy, uh, because of uh, an illness in the family, couldn't make it tonight. Jim, you're filling in on the TV broadcast, and not only are we being seen in Salt Lake on KXIV Channel 14, and of course here in Indianapolis on the various cable outlets, American Cable and Comcast, but in Salt Lake and the Golden Eagles Radio Network. So quite a few people are getting a chance to see or hear tonight's broadcast and a great opportunity. I'm having a good time, Jim. This is this is a great chance to, to give the fans both here in Indianapolis and back in Salt Lake an opportunity to see this exciting international league. And personally, Mike, I'm jealous because you negotiated a better deal. You knew all these systems were carrying the game and you got a better financial take of it. So, Oh, yeah, I'm making big <laughs> bucks because of this. But we heard about 800,000 people combined between the market in Salt Lake and the market's here in Salt Lake and it should be exciting uh, for the fans uh, some scores in the International League and the only score so far uh, with Kansas City and Cleveland a one nothing Blades lead but Cincinnati and Kalamazoo the Cyclones a first team a first year team in the International League an unaffiliated squad in Cincinnati Ohio and from our radio perspective we will be in Cincinnati next week now you look at the National Hockey League San Jose off to a rough start so far against the Sabres it's an ESPN game tonight between Montreal and New York. They're in the second period at the Garden. Islanders and Washington kind of bringing up the rear of their division there in the first, and the Kings without Gretzky. Can they survive? They're having a great start, though. No question about it. I think uh, Barry Melrose is doing a tremendous job behind the bench for the Kings. They seem to have really ba bonded together with the loss of Gretzky. Coffee and Curry, etc., are still there. Kelly Rudy's playing outstanding goal, and Early on, a, a big story, the, the Flames and the Kings battling for first place in the Smite division of the National Hockey League. And for those folks here in Indianapolis, we remind you, tomorrow night, the same two teams here at the Pepsi Coliseum. Hope you have a chance to come on and watch the International Hockey League, a fine crowd tonight here in Indianapolis, and we anticipate more of the same. Two very good defensive teams will set it up at 735. Now for the second period of play-by-play, -play, it's time for me to rest, Michael, and for you to go to work. Yeah, both teams have made their appearance on the ice. It should be an interesting second period. Treffle